Hello, welcome Holly Bar. And I'm now onto my base rails of a staircase that I'm oh well building. And the base rails I'm making here are gonna be for a balustrade. It's like a bridge going across between the top of the staircase and then to um, an upstairs bedroom. So it's gonna be like a floating thing kind of thing. Well support both ends, it's not exactly floating, it's not gonna be like monkey on his carpet. But no, monkey on carpet? No, monkey on his cloud, that's it. Monkey. And um Basically, all I'm going to do is domino, with the festal domino, my spindles along the base rail. So, it's a, it's a relatively simple thing to do, obviously. Um, and no way of obviously, doing your base rails and, and your spindles. If you're buying them commercially off the shelf, there'd be a slot in your base rail, and then you have those infill pieces you put between each individual spindle or balustrade or whatever you like to call it in your case um, but the problem is that sometimes it's not that easy to mark out exactly where they all are so all I do is I do a marking stick now I've got a marking stick that I use on a regular basis because I want to maintain um, 100 mil between or less between the balustrade or banisters and uh, that's a legal requirement here in France. I'm not sure what the, what the code is in um, the US, but generally here you, you mustn't have any more than a 100mm gap in between. And a standard size spindle here is 25 by 40 mil. That, that's pretty much it, you know, just a very simple square, basically a square vertical piece of timber, 25mm thick and 40mm approximately in width. Um, so they're, they're very, very simple. So all I've done is I've made a, a marker stick, like that one, with like little lines. And each one is set at a correct distance, allowing for centres of each um, banister or balustrade. And allowing for that, but then it allows for the fact that I will maintain just under a 100mm gap in between. I don't go less than 100mm because they look awful if you're too small. So I usually try to keep it between 90, 90 95ish in between the actual spindles or balusters or balustrades. So what I do here is in this case, I've made one here. Here's one I prepared earlier. Using the Domino Dell, the DX700. In the narrow setting, because you've got a width setting on there. There's two settings. One for, um, allow for a bit of movement in the dowel, but and one is tight. But I've done it on the smaller size. So all I do is I grab my tape, like this, and I measure the centre, or if I find out where the centre is, in this case it's 85 centimetres or 850 millimetres, whatever that might be in Imperial, I should remember but I can't, but there you go, that effectively is my centre. Now these aren't exactly to length because I'm not fitting a staircase, I've actually made these slightly oversized so the customer can trim them to size on site once he's got all his nil posts and stuff in and um, Everything's worked from the centre, so basically, if there is any makeup of the gap, it'll be on the ends, which will be fine. If they end up a little bit shorter than necessary, or you might end up cutting them right off, it doesn't matter. So, once I've got that centre line, I can then use my marker stick like this one here and literally plonk that on there like so, and I can use that to create lines. Now, that's great for the first one, and I'd get a, like a series of lines. But if you've already made one, like for instance I have here, my Blue Peter style. If you're from England, at my age, you're not Blue Peter's about. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> what you can do is you can transfer the centre mark of the original one across. So that becomes my template. And all I'm going to do is make sure the ends are touching. Because there's four of these, all identical for the bridge. And I'll just put this down in the centre of that one. And then I'll mark down the centre of that one. And do the same on every single one. If it wasn't the if it wasn't the, the second one I'm doing, I would then actually use my marker stick all the way along. So I'm just putting a line across here like so, like you would do if you're doing biscuit joining with a biscuit joiner. But in this case, I'm using the Domino Hex Tool DF700 EQXL. What's it? Right, we've got a series of lines. I can't put them in the wrong place because you're not going to be able to see them where they are. So I really want to transfer them onto this edge. So I'll do that anyway, just to make life a little bit easier. Do, 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 do. Just 
try to go across. An engineering square like this one is very handy for this job. Definitely worth having. You haven't got an engineering square, combination square or engineering square like this, well then quite frankly you need to get yourself one. I know a lot of people like those roofing squares or, you know, the uh, oh, Swanson's, the Swans, yeah, the Swanson Square. Yeah, they're very good, I have to admit, but they're mainly really designed for use with the construction industry for doing roofs and working out all your rafter angles and stuff. In this case, I am just going to do this, use it as a way of transferring my line across. Now I've got effectively a line at every single um, point where there's going to be a spindle. I know that in my distance from the inside edge, so for instance, if I'm walking along my bridge and there's a drop down to the left, my inside edge of my base rail, in this case, is slightly narrower to the centre line of the actual spindle to the outside edge. And the reason for that is this is going to overhang the um, wall slightly here, and then there's going to be an apron piece here. So let's take this is the apron, it's going to be mounted kind of a bit like that, and that trims the edge of the wall, and it looks really neat. So it's not, if I put it more down the centre, they wouldn't line up correctly with the handrail. And obviously that's quite important. So if you don't get them in the right place, the handrail ones are going to be too far one way or the other. And you're limited on your handrail depending on the centre line of your nil post. So everything is retrospective. Well, you know, one thing affects another thing. It's progressive. It's an accumulative error if you're not careful. So all I need to do now is, using my festal domino, and luckily I don't have to go too far down because it's only 30 mil, and the height adjustment on the fence here of the festal domino dial is um, it can cope with it quite easy. If it can't, you could use this stop, um, this attachment, I can't remember what it's called, but um, this attachment, it comes with your festal domino. If you buy the festal domino there for 700, you should get one of these in there. And this mounts to the face plate of your festal. So it screws it into the base plate of your festal domino. I don't know where that goes, but it goes somewhere. I haven't even used it. So it goes on there like so. And that increases the um, oh, the surface area of the face. We can still use that. That's, I can still put that on there. I'll put another head on it, shall I? Yeah, I'll do that. I haven't even used it, so this is novel. So we'll put that on there like so. And that increases the surface area that prevents you from being you know, wobbly. Especially if you're working near an edge or you've got a small profile, um, an edge profile to actually work off. This increases your surface area. Now, at the moment I've got all my pins up, I don't need them out, so I'll put them in so they don't get caught up. And it's a bit dirty, and I'm not using dust extraction, which you should, always with a festal domino, but I'm not going to because I can't be bothered. I'm getting on with it. I'm going to use my hold down, and I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. You shouldn't do it. I'm going to use the hold down, because this makes life a little bit easier. Normally what I do is I put it in my voice over there, but means the camera's over there and I don't want to keep moving about, um, reposition it, because I don't want to edit the video. And if I keep moving things about, the likelihood is I'll have to edit the video. So I'm going to bring you over here. I don't know what it's doing that for. Come back. Oh, there we go. This is on the gimbal, this, this camera, and it's, um, yeah, it's got a mind of its own. Right, let's bring that down here like so. Oh, not that way. This way, it's Game of Darts. Literally what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put you down over here instead. That's it, let's make you dizzy. Let's make you dizzy. Let's put that up there. Excuse-moi. But so you can see what's going on. That's it, just like that. Yeah. So I'll do a few of those and then you'll see what I'm on about, I hope. So I've set this to 15mm um, depth because that's all I require. These aren't there to actually hold the um, spindle rigid. It's going to be there to actually help support the, rigid, um, the spindle, stop from sliding backwards and forwards. It's a null post that holds it all up, upright. So we'll basically each one of these um, spindles will have one of these in each end of the spindle. Anyway, let's, let's put these in. I haven't got the dust extraction on, so I'd like you to get a bit messy. Well, I'm not going to use that base for that because it's getting in the way. <laughs> if I was using it, if I was doing this in the actual voice, um, 
the depth here wouldn't get in the way. At the moment, it's trying to sit on the bench. So it's prevent me from making full contact with the top of that. If I was doing the vise, I can have it hanging out over the end of the vise, and then, um, where is it, over there? Uh, <laughs> out over the end of the vise, and then it wouldn't get in the way. But because I'm on top of the bench here, that doesn't allow me to get it close enough to the edge of the board. And I'd have an error. I don't want an error. That's better. So all I've got to do now is line up my mark. There's a mark on the top here. Hopefully I don't, I'm not blocking the camera. There's a line on there. Pencil line which we created. On here we have um, like a clear plastic guide there with a little pinhole, a little drill hole in the middle there. That gives you millimetres either way. Up to 20, 30 millimetres either way. Well, we don't need to worry about that. All we've got to do is get that mark in the middle where that little hole is. And if we do that, you know, job should be a good one. So that is going to be the back face of this space rail, so the one where you're going to be walking the face into. That's one. Bring it down. As you see here, I've now done a few of them. I'll, I'll finish off the rest in a minute. I'll keep knocking a pair of steps that I've got over here. It's not enough room in this workshop. <sighs> <Dear me. laughs> so I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six in there already. I need to blow it out with air line before you can shove anything in the hole. You've got to make sure the hole's clean before you stick it in. So I'm told that either that or you've got to protect the end. Yeah, okay, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll get, yeah, that's a little bit too much. So, <laughs> so normally you'd use it with your dust extraction, and then obviously these holes here would be clear of dust. So I'm just going to blow them out. I'm, because they're only shallow, I'm not too worried. Because um, when using the Festal Domino, as you can see in here, I know I've done that video on this recently. Very recently, actually today. On <laughs> the muck up build up in the Festal Domino, as you can see there, and that stops the travel for the depth stop. And if you're doing deep mortises, it's a big no-no. You, you can't, or you mustn't, use the Festal Domino without any form of extraction, especially if you're doing deep mortises because you'll just cause an error. You Basically, some of your mortises will be deep and you know, come back here, you. And some of them will not. <laughs> but by the way, it's not my gimbal going crazy, it's me. <laughs> So anyway, that is my Festal Domino, um, which I'm using to do the um, mortises for the bottoms of the spindles in the base rail. And it seems to work really well. I've done quite a few staircases like this, and it looks really neat. Because it's just, just a nice marriage between all the pieces of wood. It doesn't look like an afterthought. And you end up with lots of less... Oh, lots of less. Um, you, you end up with less little joints everywhere. Like, for instance, we've got those little inserts you're chucking in everywhere. You know, it's a, they're a bit messy, really. It's, it's, I know that a lot of people just cake them up with varnish and what have you anyway, and they look okay-ish, but it just doesn't look finished. I, I love this idea, and it looks really neat. And the beauty about it is, is if you do using this method, say for instance, on top of a string for your banisters, you can angle everything and get it nice and hunky-dory. And the beauty about it is, you don't end up with any um, thick base rail on the top of your um, string. It just ends up really. Look, it just looks really neat. It just looks like yeah, you know, how it should how it should do. How it used to look years ago, but using a very modern machine. Oh, so you go through that bit. A little while now, but they're very good. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you missed kind and click like and subscribe, and maybe click a little bell icon because then you'll get a warm fuzzy bit in your pocket. It'll be me uploading another video. Anyway, get these awards finished. Thank you for watching. Do 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 do